destroy and um What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Um, just a half eaten bag of weedos, a sock, and a crudely drawn image of Jonah Hill. But uh yeah, anyone um get the reference? Let me know what movie I'm talking about in the comments. Because those, those are the sort of terrible jokes that Manchester United fans will be inundated with for the rest of their days. It's a disgrace! 7 nil is an absolute fraud show. Forget the Ayrton Hag worship. No, no, no. You sacked Jose Mourinho after a supposed shocking 3-1 defeat at Anfield. And yet, Ten Hag turns up and loses by 7 goals. And you're probably also queuing up to kiss him on the cheek because he won you a Carling Cup. This result isn't even funny. It's an absolute slap in the face to every single Manchester United supporter on the planet. Manchester United are a global attraction. This morning there's probably embarrassed children waking up in Trinidad with Dwight York bed sheets and yet now they're probably too ashamed to look their mates in the eye at cricket practice. I mean what are the little kids who support Man United in Ghana, Cyprus or Singapore who are now probably weeping into their Cheerios? Uh, I don't know, do they eat Cheerios in India? But my point is that these multi-millionaires, they don't care. You really think Ralph Weghorst will have barely slept last night? No, he just needs to look at how much he's earning this week and yeah, it once again be as happy as the Teletubby son. These players are absolute rotten eggs. Just think Humpty Dumpty with leprosy. What gets me is that these Manchester United players, this result won't follow them around for life. No, no, no. Someone like Anton in 15 years time will be a pampered multi-millionaire probably living it up in a Hawaii resort, being served hamburgers by monkey butlers and having his feet rubbed by an Egyptian queen. But Man United fans, this result, this is their life. How are these supporters ever going to look Liverpool fans in the eyes ever again? Imagine those supporters having to work side by side in an office. Oh, for the next month, those Man United fans are probably just going to have to eat their lunch in the loo, just silently wolfing down a petty filet, hiding in a cubicle, hoping not to be heard whilst crying into their tie. Honestly, every office is going to be like a quiet place three, except just with a lot more toilet paper. 7 nil will dog these supporters for life. I mean, Manchester lost 4 0 at Anfield last season. Oh, but, but don't worry, Man United fans, because that result isn't going to destroy your self esteem. No, 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 because not only is that not your worst loss to Liverpool inside the last 18 months, but it's not even your second worst. Since October 2021, you have lost 4 0 to Liverpool, 5 0 to Liverpool, and now, oh well done, 7 0 to Liverpool. It's an absolute disgrace. Words can't even sum this up. What sort of football club can see 7? goals in a Premier League match. Oh, I'll tell you exactly who. Sheffield Wednesday, Sunderland, Stoke City, Ipswich Town, Wigan Athletic, Reading. I mean, to be fair, some big clubs have done it too, like Newcastle, Aston Villa, and weirdly, Liverpool themselves. But I maintain that day in October 2020, it now finally makes sense. When we saw the Reds ship seven goals at Aston Villa, it made utterly no sense. It was like watching a videotape of your mum beating up the Chinese president with a cricket bat outside KFC. But on that same day, Manchester United were also embarrassed, losing 6-1 to Tottenham. But I actually feel that that whole afternoon was a foreshadowing moment. Because that day, Liverpool fans were almost traumatised into a coma. But... Seven. 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 Seven, 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 seven. I actually feel that this man is football's version to Hodor of Game of Thrones. I mean, you know the one. Hold the door! Hold the door! Hold the door! Yeah, that one. Except this time, it's seven. Because this is just a little window portal into the future. Just a hint of what would actually be Klopp's greatest ever result. I feel like we'd be leading up to this result for years. Because the number seven is everywhere. I mean, Manchester United's most iconic shirt number is seven. Liverpool's haunted number is seven. Just ask Robbie Key. I mean, the big drama of the season was about Cristiano Ronaldo quitting. What? You mean CR7? Yeah, just replace that seven with a Y. And that's exactly what Man United fans did last night. I mean, last week, Liverpool were disappointed not to score at Crystal Palace. Because, I mean, two years ago, they won there by seven goals to nil. Lat, it gets even weirder. Last summer, sure, Eric Ten Hag wanted to buy Frankie de Jong, but I mean, the backup plan was Ruben Neves from Wolves. Yeah, guess what? Neves backwards is seven. It's everywhere. Ozzy, it's like at the end of The Shining when you see red rum spelled backwards in the mirror. Neves! Neves! Neves!
There are so many coincidental connections. It's like season one of Lost. I mean, remember that HBO show? We just overlooked the fact that everyone had to go to the toilet in the woods. Honestly, that forest was a stunk of hobbit poo. But honestly, seven is everywhere. Liverpool lost not like a forest this season, right? Yeah, one of my United's most famous ever wins is winning by seven goals at Forest. Without Odding and Sasha are coming off the bench to score four. You know, the guy who was sitting on the bench as manager watching Man United lose by four at Anfield last season? Lads, the clues were there. I mean, there were seven goals at Anfield last week in the Liverpool Real Madrid match. And uh, lads, even Ten Hag's last name, Hag, is a three letter word for a witch. Uh, um, guess what? Ten minus three. A7! I mean, Gary Neville is the face of the Liverpool Manchester United rivalry. And um, losing 7 0 is the face of his managerial career. Last season, Ten Hag was coaching Ajax against Klopp's former club, Borussia Dortmund, in the Champions League. Ajax scored 7. The clues were there! And yet, I did a video predicting the worst thing that would happen to every Premier League club this season. I only made it last week, and um, I had this game in there. Liverpool lose to Man United. I think Liverpool are gonna have a brilliant end of the season. But! Sorry lads, but I reckon you're gonna drink a coffee mug full of embarrassment on March the 5th. I actually think this is gonna be Liberals' rock bottom moment on the Jurgen Club. I'm gonna go for a 4-1 Man United win. This is just gonna be one of those free monster results. Sorry Liverpool fans, but yeah, this match will taste like rotten pig meat in your mouth. Rock bottom moment for Liverpool. Honestly, what? Well lads, when Man United lost 9-0 in aggregate to Liverpool last season, at least then, you were getting destroyed by a team that battled away to 92 points. But this season, I know this isn't even Liverpool's biggest win this season, but this is not a Liverpool team to fear. This season, they failed to beat Fulham, Crystal Palace, Everton, Brighton, Arsenal, Nottingham Forest, Leeds, Brentford, Brighton, Chelsea, Wolves, Crystal Palace, Man City, Napoli, Real Madrid, and even Derby County. That is 16 different football clubs who've managed not to lose. Liverpool are a team sitting fifth in the Premier League, and yet 7-0, 7-0, even Bobby scored. And uh, yeah, Firmino has seven letters too. Oh, by the way, if you agree with what I'm saying here, smash that big fat subscribe button. If, if the 7-0 was really as much a disgrace as I think it was, hit that big fat red subscribe button to let me know. Back into the video. This is a disgrace. No, this is worse than a disgrace. Manchester's reputation is absolutely in the mud. Actually, no, not even in the mud. Because at least with mud, you can wash it off in the bath. No, these are permanent stains on the club. It's this is if Manchester United just went out and got a sleeve of embarrassing tattoos. And I'm just featuring Nigel Farage's face. Or Pikachu wearing women's lingerie. Since Fergie left in 2013, Manchester United have lost to 17 of the current 20 Premier League teams. It's just Fulham, Nottingham Forest and Leeds who haven't beaten them inside the last 10 years. But lads, it gets even worse since Christmas 2009. If I find Manchester United's worst defeat to each current Premier League club than of the 19 current PL teams they've lost to since then, this is the aggregate score. 61 Six. Chelsea, Brighton, Brentford, West Ham, Everton and Liverpool have all had 4-0 wins over this team since 2010. I mean, there's two 6-1 defeats at home in there. This team reminds me of Arsenal under Arsene Wenger. No, not when they were winning the Premier League without losing a match. No, no, it was the fragile, frail Wenger ball where the players had the backbone of a crippled teddy bear. I mean, Man United fans used to laugh and pity the Gunners for losing 8-2 at Old Trafford. Yeah, guess what? 7-0 is worse than 8-2. Go back to the 13-14 season. And sure, like Ten Hag's Man United, Arsenal finished inside the top four. Fine. But it was their trips to the big clubs where they collapsed like the bowels of an overweight horse, conceding five at Anfield, six at Chelsea, and oh yeah, a 6-3 defeat at Manchester City. Does that sound familiar? I mean, that season, Arsenal, um, they also lost 3-1 to Aston Villa. Again, sound familiar? I know what people will say, but Man United beat Barcelona 2-1 at home. Give them some respect. Yeah, um, back when Arsenal lost 8-2 at Man United, that same year, they also beat Barcelona 2-1 at home. Except it was a, a much better Barcelona team. It still meant Arsenal at the spine of a couch. And guess what, lads? The second half of the Wenger Ball era went nowhere. I mean, he just wound up losing 
10 2 on aggregate to Bayern Munich in the Champions League. And that's because nobody ever corrected the losing culture at that club. Guy Neville wants to try and pretend this result was a fluke. No, 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 no. This season, you can see the four and one half at Brentford. That takes a special type of stupid. And to find yourself 6 1 down at the Eddie Hat with two players scoring hat tricks? No! These Manchester United players are an absolute disgrace. I mean, look at Liverpool. Andy Robertson is arguably the face of that club's recent success because ever since the grubby Scottish left back arrived from Hull, everything started to immediately click. But Luke Shaw, he is the face of Manchester United failure. Next year, we'll bring up 10 years of Shaw at the club. He is the face of your demise. I mean, at half time, he's probably eating ice cream with a fork. He has been emblematic of Manchester United's disgusting rot since Fergie left. And in that second half, he just looked like he was a player on FIFA 12, being controlled by a drunken goblin after nine beers. And speaking of goblins, Bruno Fernandes is a complete disgrace. Sure, the guy's got a building in his feet, but whose idea is it to make him captain for a trip to Anfield? This man is a 28-year-old brat. You really think this guy is a leader in the dressing room when he's got the attitude of a sport well, Kardashian, this is your captain. Someone with the body language of a child who didn't get their new iPhone on Christmas Day. Honestly, he's just football's answer to Will Smith's son. Giving him the captain's arm by the Manchester United for a trip to Anfield. No! It's like asking Miley Cyrus to take the ring to Mordor. Ah, no thanks! Give the armband to Casemiro or Varane. You know, two men with nine Champions Leagues and a World Cup between them? I mean, Bruno, Michael Patterson has won less trophies than Victor Moses and spent his mid-twenties pouting because he didn't get a move to Spurs. And this, this guy is the Manchester United captain? Imagine getting a team talk from him. I'd sooner like a naked hug from Charlie Sheen. Anthony cost nearly 100 million euros and can't even be bothered to run. They say this Manchester United team is likable now. I'm sorry. Who really wants to hang out with Anthony, Bruno, Lissandra Martinez, Wout Weghorst, and Alejandro Garnacho? Imagine those five around a table on bingo night. I feel more safe playing poker with the cast of Goodfellas. Even the likes of Anthony and Garnacho. They look like the type of brats who'd sneer down their nose at anyone on a bus. These Man United players aren't likeable. No chance. And this is horrific. This would be embarrassing for a lower league team. I mean, Bournemouth decided that a walloping in Anfield wasn't good enough for the standards of the club and they sacked Scott Parker on the spot. But Manchester United, in the last two seasons against Liverpool, you've played them four times. The score is Liverpool 17, Manchester United 2. In the last five meetings, the score is Liverpool 21, Manchester United Four. That, that, that's horrific. Manchester United's two biggest games of the season are a trip to the Etihad and Anfield. The idea is to turn up and grind out clean sheets before maybe sneaking a win. While um, in Josie Mourinho's debut season at Old Trafford, he left both grounds with clean sheets. Frustrating both Guardiola and Klopp. And everyone at the time sneered at Manchester United for laboring to those nil-nil draws. As if they just saw a millionaire like Justin Timberlake paying hobos to lick his feet. Yeah, this season, you've conceded 13 goals in those two trips. And uh, you also conceded three away at Arsenal. And let's not forget, you were seconds away from losing away to a Chelsea team coached by Graham Potter. Somewhat about as scary as a cheese sandwich. What if Man United actually done under Ten Hag? He won the League Cup by beating Aston Villa, Burnley, Charlton, Nottingham Forest and Newcastle. Um, they just finished second in the Europa League group where Neil Lennon was an opposition coach. Yeah, you've beaten Man City and Barcelona at home. Okay. Mourinho at comeback wins at the likes of Juventus and the Eddie Hat. Ali Gunnar Solskjaer as attackers of Rob Meatloaf and he beat Man City four times. So? Everyone wants to talk about Manchester United's incredible run of four. Yeah, in 2023 alone, you failed to beat Crystal Palace, Arsenal, Leeds and Barcelona away. And now this. I remember the first time I saw a 7-0 in the Premier League. It was Everton under David Moyes, a team who weirdly would finish fourth that season and above Liverpool who won the Champions League. Yeah, they turned up to Highbury and lost by seven goals to nil. And I thought, what a pathetic spineless bunch of rubbish. The next season, Steve McLaren was Middlesbrough manager and lost 7-0 at Arsenal too. So um, he might have looked paralysed with fear on the Man United bench, but he's seen this all before. Never did I ever think I'd be saying this about Manchester United. That's Norwich lost 7-0 at Chelsea last year. And that was hideously embarrassing. And they were a newly promoted club against the champions of Europe. This is just... Wow! The last time Man United conceded seven at this ground was in 1895. Yeah, 
every single person who watched that game is now dead. Uh, at least I hope they're dead. Can you imagine someone who's 130 years old sitting down to watch this match? If they sneezed, they'd probably break every bone in their face. <sighs> you suck, Jose, for this. Disgrace. Anyway, it's one thing. Let me know just what you think of the 7 0. I'm in shock, but let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to get like, subscribe, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.